Hey friends! Okay, it is time once again for me to share my plan to pan for the upcoming year, which is 2023. Uh, still getting used to hearing and saying that number, but it'll be here before we know it. So this time I feel like I am coming at this video from a very realistic, grounded place. If you saw my video from a few weeks ago where I shared some reflections on my 2022 plan to pan video, you saw I I made some really lofty and unrealistic goals for this year and I didn't really meet very many of them. So for this year, I've taken a little bit of a different approach. I selected products that I am much more confident that I can finish in 2023, but I'm not solely picking products just because they're the oldest products in my collection because then I feel like that's when project painting starts to feel like a chore or a punishment. Some of these are older products, some of them are things I've only had for the last year or so, but they're all products that I really like and that I feel like they would be fun to project pan knowing what I know about myself and my makeup habits. First, I want to talk a little bit about what the structure of my 2023 project is going to look like. So I'm going to be doing it rolling project pan style like I have in the past. I'm going to pick around 10 products to work on at a time. Sometimes it might be less if I don't have that many things I feel like working on. Sometimes it might be more, but Every quarter, I'm going to take about a week or two break from panning just so that I can get reacquainted with my makeup and see what I'm naturally gravitating to using. And then I will do a quarterly refresh where I might pick an entirely new set of products. I might roll some over from the previous quarter and add some new things in, but I'm going to give myself a chance to completely restart every quarter of the year. I'm also going to be incorporating eyeshadows into my project pan and I talked more about that in my eyeshadows I've hit pan on video slash want to hit pan on where I shared the eyeshadows that I really would like to hit pan on in 2023. Most of those are shadows that I already love because they're ones that I've just naturally dipped into a lot already. I would just like to start seeing some more pans in my palettes and really throughout my whole collection. Check out that video if you want to hear more about the eyeshadows that I want to hit pan on. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share with you the products I've picked out. I have 17 products here and really this is the list that I'm going to pull from mostly when I'm selecting products to work on. It's not to say these are the only products I'm going to work on next year. Maybe there will be something that I decide I want to work on instead or, you know, things are subject to change. So let's start with the face products. Also, okay, I feel like there's a lot to like introduce <laughs> before I get into the actual products, but to select these products, I referenced my empties analysis, which I is a video I did in January of this year where I went back and looked at all of the empties I've used up category by category over the previous five years and found out the average number of each category that I go through in a year. So for example, and I can link that video below, it was super fun and I'm planning on doing an updated one after this year's over so we can have even more data to look at. So for example, I found out that I typically go through about two powders per year, one and a half to two foundations per year. So I made sure to keep those numbers in mind in order to make realistic choices here. So starting out with the base products that I would like to finish in 2023. So the first one that I want to finish, this one I'm actually working on currently, but it is not going to be done by the end of 2022. I know that for sure. So this is the next one that I would like to finish in 2023. And I think that should be no problem. You can see I have already used a lot of this and I think that it would be pretty easy to use this up in the first six months of the year. That's what I'm thinking. This is my oldest foundation. That's not the only reason why I want to pan it, but it is a good reason to go ahead and get it moved out. And it's one that I really like. Oh, and one more thing. This time, this is another new thing I have implemented into my plan to pan for this year versus previous years, is in my notes, I've marked each product with either a red or a yellow circle emoji. So the red emoji just means it's a higher priority and the yellow means it's a lower priority. And this one would be a higher priority. The next one, this is more of a medium priority, but this is the next foundation that I would like to finish another favorite. This is actually the one I'm wearing today, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh foundation. I had it, I had it laying sideways, so I'm not able to see exactly how much is left in here, but I know it's around half and that's with just naturally reaching for this, not actively panning it. So this seems to be one where I see like, pretty good progress on this with consistent use. So I put this as a lower priority. I said that I want to finish it if I get to it, but 
if I don't, that's totally fine. But I figure both of these are about half of the way through, so seeing as how I wrote down in my notes that I use up between one and two foundations a year, I feel like it should be pretty doable to use up both of these, so we will see if that ends up happening. I also put in, this is a higher priority one, the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I love this concealer, it is one of my favorites, but I would like to either use this up or get close to using it up in 2023, simply because I don't want it to expire and I've heard from some people that this can expire quickly. I had that experience with the Kosas Revealer Foundation, which I loved, but unfortunately it started smelling fishy after we moved, so I am keeping a close eye or a close nose on my other Kosas products. Because I love this concealer and I bought it with my own money, I really don't want it to go bad before I can use it up. So this is the next concealer that I am planning on working on using up. I also picked out, this is another yellow product, a lower priority one, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have the mini of this and if I'm not mistaken, it looks like I have half of this left. It seems like that's where it has settled. Now, I'm not sure if that's exactly true, but there is a distinct line about halfway through, so who knows what that really means, but I've actually really grown to enjoy using this to mix with other foundations. I have found that I like using this on the parts of my face where I don't need a lot of coverage and then using my regular foundation on the parts where I do and just blending it all out from there. Because this is a mini, I feel like it wouldn't be too hard to use this up next year. So my goal would be to finish this if I do get around to working on it. Also, as with all of these products, let me know if you yourself have panned any of these and what your experience was. Did you find them to take a lot longer than you expected or to go a lot quicker than you expected? Just any insight that you have. Let me know, because I'm always curious to hear from you guys. So another Kosas product that I'm currently working on, but that won't be done by this year's finale, but I do want to finish this up next year, the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. This is what mine looks like right now. I've almost flattened it out, and I don't know how much longer it'll take after that, but I pretty much use this as my everyday powder. It's the one I'm wearing today. And once again, I am worried that this might expire soon-ish. I've had it now for almost exactly a year, and it says that the shelf life is 18 months. So ideally, I would use it up by mid-2023. Another lower priority one, but I still would like to make some progress on this, not necessarily finish it, but the Oma Contour Stick, specifically the contour side, that is the side that I use more often and that I have already used a lot more of. So I probably would only be focusing on the contour, and I'm sure by nature of them being together, I would probably still use the highlight a lot. I just wouldn't be actively trying to make progress on it. But this is how much I have of each one. You can see I do have a little bit more highlighter than I do contour. And for this, I wrote down that my goal would be to use half of what I have at my starting point. So not necessarily use it all the way up, although that would be great. But cheek products like this, because I find these to take a lot longer to use up than complexion products, where with complexion products, if I have those in my project pan, even not using those like every single day, I'm still able to use those up in a timely manner. Whereas with this kind of thing, or with really any cheek product, if I wanted to use this up completely in the next year, I know that would mean I'd have to use it pretty much every day. And I think that would result in me then neglecting my other bronzers. So that's why I set the goal of just using up half of this, or half of what I have left, but that's the only contour or bronzer that I have on this list today. Okay, here's a product that I haven't even had for a full year, but I would still love to hit pan on this in 2023. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush in the shade Nude Kiss. I love this blush. This has been one of my favorite products of 2022. Right now, I just have a really small dip in here, but I'd love to hit pan on this in 2023. I don't necessarily want to use it up all the way, but I just like to see a pan in it, that's all. So I think this would be a really fun one to work on because it's one of my favorites and I would just like to see how long it takes to a pan on it really. Another one that I'm currently working on that I would like to keep working on in 2023 and use up, just finish it off completely, this is the Becca Mini Highlighter in Champagne Pop. I hit pan on this in 2021, repressed it, now I have hit pan again. This is my oldest highlighter, also one of my favorite highlighters and I would just like to go ahead and use it up, especially since I've already come so far on it. I think it would be really satisfying to have this 
in my 2023 makeup empties. And that one I wrote down as a higher priority. So another highlighter, this will be a bit more of a challenge and I'm not, I'm not going to be upset if I don't hit pan on this, but I would love to hit pan on my Aether highlighter in the shade Pink Diamond Dust. I already have a decent sized dip in here, as you can see, but at the same time, I have no idea how deep this pan goes. Uh, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I've never hit pan really on any Aether product that I know of. Um, but judging by their eyeshadows, they do seem to have really deep pans. So I might not hit pan on this. I wrote down my goal would either be to hit pan or just, just make a bigger dip in here. That would just be nice to see. And I have two of these, but this one I have a bigger dip on. So I think that would be the one that I'd want to work on first. So those are all of the face products I've picked out. Really tried to keep it realistic and low pressure, especially in the cheek product category, because even if I'm working on a cheek product, I still want to make sure I'm rotating through my other products that I have in those categories. And that's really what my everyday makeup drawer rotating shop my stash is for. I really like to have that going on alongside my project pan so that I can make sure that I'm still using my other products and not solely focusing on my project pan things. And I found that that works really well. Also, another mindset sort of thing that works for me is doing like the default panning technique where my project pan items are the products I default to if there's nothing else I want to use that day. But if I sit down and I'm like, oh, I really want to use this concealer, but this one is in my project pan, I just let myself use the other concealer. When I notice myself wanting to use something else, I always let myself use that over the project pan thing. That way it keeps me from feeling like I'm obligated to use these products because I really don't think I should ever feel obligated to use something. Just because something is in my project pan, it's just as much a member of my makeup collection as everything else. So there's no reason to force myself to use something that I don't want to. And if I repeatedly notice myself not wanting to reach for a project pan item, that's when I know it's time to roll it out. It's really all in the mindset, you know? So in addition to the eyeshadows that I want to hit pan on that I talked about in that other video, I only have one additional eye product to talk about in today's video, and that is this cream shadow here. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize cream shadow in rose gold, a very expensive, <laughs> very overpriced product in my opinion, but it is a very luxe product and I don't want this to just sit in a drawer and not get used. And I did, I do remember, this was actually part of my pan those eyeshadows that I did in the beginning part of 2022. And I really enjoyed reaching for this in that project, I remember. So that tells me, I think this would be a fun thing to throw into my project pan at some point in 2023. Maybe even just keep it in continuously. If I you know, continue enjoying it, I'll keep it in as long as I do. So this is a cream shadow. You can see I have a nice dip already in here. And the goal would not be to finish this in 2023, but really, I think I'd want to just have like this, the loose goal of using it twice per week. I'm not going to actually track my uses because once again, I found that that just ended up feeling like more of a chore to me. So um, that would just be something that I just kind of keep in the back of my mind, like try to use it twice per week. That way I'd be using it like eight to 10 times per month, which I think would be a great way to just keep seeing good usage in this and to expand the dip a little bit. It would be great if I could hit pan on this in 2023. It's a very neutral color. It's a color that I can incorporate into a lot of looks or just wear it as a base for many of the looks that I do. Or also on days where I am just throwing on a quick face of makeup, this is a great one and done shadow. So a lot of ways I can use this and um, this one I put as a lower priority but it's just something that I want to make sure that I'm using and not just letting it sit and collect dust because it is such a fancy product. You'll notice I actually, I found that I really enjoy panning higher end, fancier things for a couple of reasons. This is a very chatty video, isn't it? Bless you, um, Tala sneezed. The first reason is that I don't ever want to save my high end products for a special occasion because really how many special occasions do I have per year? Like maybe four, <laughs> maybe. So it would be such a waste to, to only use those things a few times a year. I like to think every day is a special occasion. Even if I'm just bumming around the house, it's still a good enough occasion to use my fancy things. So that's one reason I like to put those in my projects. Also, because they're more expensive, I definitely want to make sure that 
those things I'm getting my money's worth on. Not to say I don't also enjoy panning drugstore things. I have even been known to pan some of the cheapest, you know, $2 powders and things like that. Like, I, I don't really discriminate when it comes to price. Regardless of the price point, I still want to see things getting used up in my collection, but that's something I've realized this year is I want to make sure I'm doing a good mix of high-end and drugstore things in my project. I don't want to just save those high-end things for, you know, for later because those things can inspire just like anything else. One thing to notice is that I don't have any eyeliners here on my list, nor do I have any brow products. I thought about including my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade because this is already three years old and I've already used a ton of it. I don't really want to put this in my project pan because I realized that brows, I just like to use whatever I feel like using that day. I don't have a huge brow product collection as it is. But lately my preference is my NYX Thick It Stick It Tinted Brow Gel and sometimes I add in a little bit of my NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. Those are the two things I have in my brows today and that's what I've really been loving. So I don't want to force myself to use this instead just because it's older. I will still try and maybe I'll add this into my project at some point in 2023 but I just feel like if I were to put this on my plan to pan list, I would then feel guilty for not reaching for it. And that's another thing. I'm just trying not to feel any guilt when it comes to makeup because this is literally just supposed to be a fun hobby. And the moment guilt starts to come into the picture, there's no need. So that's why I didn't end up including that on the list, even though I would like to get this used up. But at the same time, I'm not really worried about it either. I also didn't pick any eyeliners to put on here because once again, I don't really like panning eyeliners. I just like to reach for whatever eyeliner makes sense for my eye look that day and it's gonna change every day. Um, so I'd rather just, you know, I'd rather just naturally use up my eyeliners and that is something that I would prefer to have as a shop my stash item rather than a project pan item. Next up for lip products, I actually did choose a lot of lip products. I have a total of seven lip products here, glosses, lipsticks, and liners. Now some of these I definitely want to finish, others I just would maybe like to see some progress on them. So first up for lip liners, this one is carried over from my plan to pan list from this year because I never got around to putting this in my project this year. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in Manic. This, as you can see, I've already used up a lot of this. I did work on this in 2021 and basically took like a year-long break from it. I would like to work on it again and just go ahead and get it used up. It's a nice rosy pink that coordinates well with some of the other lip products that I've chosen, so I think that would be pretty easy to use up. And then the other lip liner is my Mented Peach Lip Pencil. This one I love. This one is more of a, a warm peach, whereas this is more of like a just neutral rose color. This is how much I have left of this, which is also not a ton. I actually haven't used this very much at all in 2022, but I was using it like crazy in 2021. I kind of just got away from using it because I this year I was using my Koki lip liners nonstop, and those are still a heavy part of my rotation. I don't feel the need to put any of those in my project pan at this point, but this one I would like to go ahead and finish up because it's a great color. I think this would be a good one to put in in the summertime because it's warm and peachy. And this one also goes well with another one of the lip products, which I'll just go ahead and share right now. I think this was on my 2022 plan to pan list and I just didn't get around to it. This is the Bird's Bees Gloss Lip Crayon in Santorini Sunrise. This is another case of, you know, there's not a whole lot left. I mean, you know, that's a, a decent amount. This will probably take me three to five months to go through. So, you know, it would take some work for sure. Of course, with lipsticks, I also really enjoy using these as blushes, assuming it works well. I don't think I've tried this as a blush, so I'd have to make sure it doesn't break me out or anything, but most of them don't, and most of them work great as a blush. So this one would be good, and if I were to put either of these in, I'd probably just have them both in at the same time since they work so well together. Those two are both lower priority, the Urban Decay lip pencil is a higher priority. And then another higher priority lip product is my CoverGirl lipstick in Honeyed Bloom. I said that weird. This I did work on at one point in 2022 as well. And this is all that's left. So this is one that I have said before I 
I will be ashamed if I <laughs> if I'm not done with this by the end of next year because there's hardly anything left. And this is a very soft creamy formula. So this one I think would be especially good to use in like the late winter into the spring. So that's probably around the time period that I would put this in my project. And that one also coordinates really well with the Urban Decay lip pencil. So I'd probably have those both in at the same time in the earlier part of the year because these are some of my higher priority lip products. They are also older too. So those are those. Another lip product, this is kind of just like an if I get to it one, a lower priority as well, but this is the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Cream. Now unlike the CoverGirl lipstick, this is a much stiffer formula. It's not nearly as creamy, and it's also not as creamy as the Burt's Bees Lip Crayon, but I've already used up a lot of this. In fact, if you compare this to... Oh no! You guys, I just dropped this on the carpet. <laughs> Gross, there's like cat hair on it now. Honestly, I think that's my sign to go ahead and declutter this then. You know what? There you go. I guess that's my sign that I'm not meant to use this up. I should just go ahead and phase it out now. <laughs> Good to know. Well, I was going to say before I dropped it that if you compare it to my other e.l.f. Seriously Satin lipsticks that I haven't used as much of, I have made a good chunk of progress on this already. So, you know, I feel like I got my $3 worth. It would have been satisfying to use it up all the way, but I guess it's just not meant to be. So the other two lip products I've chosen are both lip glosses. Now, in the past couple of years, I've learned that I go through lip glosses pretty quickly. From 2017 to 2021, the average number of lip glosses that I go through is only 1.2, but in 2021 I went- sorry if this is too many numbers, but bear with me here. In 2021, I used up three glosses, and in 2022, I am slated to use up four, I think. So I've picked two that I definitely want to work on first. The first one is my Nude by Nature lip gloss in the shade T Rose. This is my oldest gloss, and I do like to work on my glosses kind of in order of oldest to, to newest to youngest, whatever. There are some spots where you can already see through it, you see? And this has, uh, I looked it up because it's not on the packaging, but this has 3.75 milliliters, which I think is a pretty small amount. I, I don't think that should be too hard to go through. And this is just a nude pink, which I... I wear this type of gloss all the time. But the other thing is I currently own three nude pink glosses that are all very similar as you can see so i i really don't need to keep all of these so that one would be the first one to work on and then the next one is my tower 28 gloss in pistachio now this one is my oldest gloss compared to the nude by nature i've only had this one since april of 2022 isn't that convenient i can't the period after opening symbol on this is so small that it's not even readable not that it matters a whole lot because i usually take that with a grain of salt but Similar to the Kosas products, a lot of people have warned me that this can turn pretty quickly, so I would just like to use it up this year. You can see pretty well, this one is one that does settle. The Nude by Nature one doesn't seem to settle, but this one you can see I've already used up about that much, and I don't even feel like I've used this that much. So this one seems like it would be a pretty quick one to go through, so that would be the next one. Both Nude Pink glosses. I'm pretty confident that I could use up both of these in 2023, especially if I continue to go through glosses as quickly as I have been in the past two years. Uh, I think those should be no problem. I thought about adding a third one, but I wanted to keep things realistic. So those are the two I'm going to work on, and these two I both put as a higher priority. So that's it. 16 products now. It was 17, but RIP elf cream lipstick. We had a good run together. So that is my plan for my 2023 project pan. I'm really excited to get started working on these things. Stay tuned to find out which ones I picked to work on in the first quarter of the year. I'm really excited, feeling very re-inspired to pan again. I went through a bit of a rut with panning like halfway through this year, but after making just some changes to like how I approach panning, I'm feeling a lot more motivated again. So let me know if you're planning on doing a project pan in 2023, and if so, what kind of project, how many, what types of products do you like to work on? I'd love to hear about it down below. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow in my next video. Bye!